So I needed to make a door for that above storage that there above this sauna unit. Um, I didn't want it to stick out too much. I wanted it to kind of blend in as much as that does. Uh, but that's a thin bit of, I think it's 10 mil plywood. I wanted it to fit flush and I didn't want any handles on it. So I went for these push to open latches. But obviously I had to double it up the thickness in order to get these hinges. So these are just kitchen cabinet hinges, um, concealed hinges. I think they call them Euro hinges, I think. Um, these are soft closed, but you can get you know normal ones. But let's have a look how I set these without using a jig. I'm going to be fitting this hinge um, without buying a jig, basically. So I've got a fortune a bit, which is the same size as my hinge, which I know to be a 35 mil hinge, hence the 35 mil fortune a bit. These are pretty cheap and cheerful. Two bits of wood to simulate what I actually did because I had to strengthen the back of it because obviously this stuff's only 10 mil thick, so it wasn't thick enough. So a couple of clamps should hold this together. Stop it from moving. That's that. Forced a bit, our hinge, pencil, and a ruler. Now, we need about four different measurements. We need to know the width or the diameter of this hinge, which is 35, so we've got that. We need to know how far away from the edge of our door it's gonna sit, which these are pretty much all four millimeters. So that's gonna sit that way around on the door and this curve is going to be four millimeters away from the edge. So we've got that. So this, this hinge is 35, so half of that plus our four mil gives us a dimension from the edge of 21 and a half millimeters. So once we mark that, 21 and a half mil, now we've got, move that clamp out of the way, so we can mark a line there. Next thing we need to know, is how high up the door it's gonna go from the bottom. You do that simply by measuring your existing cupboards. So as you can see, ours is eight centimeters. So that is gonna be the center line, or the center of our hinge. Last, we need to know is how deep to set this. Now this is forcing a bit, if we line it up to here, we can see that we're going to go way past the shoulder. So if you're doing this by hand, go down until this is flush with your, the surface of this and then start doing little tiny bits at a time. I'm going to be using a pillar drill. It's just easier. I can set the depth. If you're doing lots of these, you can just do one after the other and go down, set a stop and it's easy. Now you don't want to go too far because obviously the, the, like the centre drill sticks out further than the actual cutting edge. So if we go down gently, we know we're safe until this is flush with the top here. Once you get down to where it's flush, this is where you have to start taking it a little bit easy. What you don't want to do is go too far and have the, the bit push through the end. So if we check this now, you can see we're not far off, a couple of mil. We go down a little bit further. Check it. A little bit more.
See, it's just touching. Obviously, you'll be fitting these in a pair. So if you drill both, both the holes, when you fit the two hinges in together, if you put a straight edge across the back of them and line it up, it will hold them both square because then you can then mark the holes to drill it. But on for this one, I'm just going to put a, there you go, put that on there. I can now mark my holes. There we go. So it's quite straightforward. You can buy jigs, but if you've got a force in a bit, you've got a drill, you can do it yourself. Um, I don't do it that often, so I don't need a jig, but there you go, that's why I do it. Hopefully it's helped you out. Check out my other stuff. I'll see you on the next one.